One of the most obvious places to fish are along the shoreline. Whether you're fishing from the bank or from a boat, the fact is they're easy to read. Generally, by looking at the various types of cover and structure found along them, you can catch a lot of fish. And that's what we're going to be doing on today's show. Coming up. Shorelines are great areas for fish because they provide food, cover, and easy access to deeper water. This makes them an excellent place for anglers to target. On today's show, we are going to showcase several outings where Bob has been fishing along shorelines. First, Bob's off to the Niagara to fish for smallmouth bass. Then we head north to the Ogoki Reservoir to fish for pike. And to end the show off, Bob heads to Vermont to do some pre-spawn bass fishing on Lake Champlain. Here comes. Whoa. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Look at that big lighter. Yeah. Ah, huge. Oh, baby. That thing is a monster. Whoa. The Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I got one. <laughs> oh, look at that thing. <laughs> Help! <laughs> look at those teeth. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Come and do me! Alright! Woohoo! Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, Whoa! Alright! Look at the size of this pen. Real fishing is sponsored by Chevrolet. Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. Hey folks, that's what I call real fishing. Shorelines are highly productive areas to catch a lot of active fish. In rivers, fish will often stay close to shorelines to stay just out of the main current and ambush prey as it drifts by. The Niagara River is full of big smallmouth that use this strategy. They will hold next to drop-offs just off the shoreline. All you need to do is bring your bait along the current break and into the fish's mouth. There we go. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Oh, nice one. Fish. All righty. There we go. That's a good old Niagara River small. Well, he just spit up a bait fish down there. Whoa, baby. That's a nice little slab right there. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> All righty. Come on in, guy. All right, that's a fatty. That's a Niagara River smallmouth there. Hey, uh, folks, glad you could join me. I'm here with Jeff Broder from Navionics. He came up from Cape Cod, do a little fishing with me. and So, so we're here. So we're here. My first time here, beautiful piece of water. All right. Well, that's a good smallmouth right there to start the day off. We're just above... Uh, Niagara Falls, fishing, uh, you know, just a break. One of the things about finding these breaks is, this is where you guys come into play, is uh, just with Navionics. Navionics are the leader in marine cartography, which is really mapping, you know. And uh, we're talking about plug-and-play type of ships that you can put in your sonar GPS units. I've got a big Lorenz uh, 38 there. And I'll tell you what, to find these breaks like we're fishing, really key, aren't they? Well, you know, if I was fishing this, and I, I, I have no idea what's around here, but, you know, you can see fairly clearly on the screen that there's a, a substantial break there, and that seems to be where the, the fish are suspending. And uh, this is the Canadian side of the river, and the same detail we have on the U.S. side, too, for our, for our U.S. customers. Well, you know, uh, I've got on um, today East Great Lakes, which take in a lot of area. We're obviously fishing in the river here, but when I'm out on Lake Erie, for instance, I'm using uh, my charting where I'll go right on some of these little subtle fingers and humps way offshore. In the early years, you know what we used to do? Spend a lot of gas. <laughs> Drive back and forth. Oh, crisscross. And sometimes I'd spend, I remember one time looking for a small hump. I spent four and a half hours to locate it in a tournament before GPS was around. Of course, in Navionics now, you go straight to the hump because you see it in living uh, color right on your screen. It's almost not fair. <laughs> no, it's almost not but fair. But I think it is. I think it is. got to rig up another tube jig and we'll take another dress. Yes, he said. 
little baby. Baby? Little oh, baby. Come on in. Another good one, yeah. Alrighty. You know, funny, the river fish are usually skinnier than this. Like the, the, the fish on Lake Erie, obviously, that are down the way are, are really fat. Where this one here is a pretty fat fish. Yeah, you mentioned that the river fish tend to be skinnier where the, uh, the slow water fish have a wider profile. All right. That's not a bad little, not a bad little small month right there. All right. See you later, guy. Okay. And you can see here, we're just doing drifts, and you can see the contour lines of this shore. And we're on the outside contour line where it drops off into, you know, 16 feet of water. And, of course, Jeff, you're feeling those rocks down there, aren't you? Yeah. But we're just fishing pretty tight to shore, working the contour lines. Last time I was here, which was, I don't know, maybe a month ago, I was all these green drifts, but today I've gone with a blue, so I can see exactly where I've gone. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go right back up again, take another drift through there, and we'll drift right in between both, uh, both drifts and cover the water. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. There's more Niagara shoreline fishing coming up. Just a little guy. Shorelines can be great fish attracting areas because of the diverse habitat. You can often find weeds, rocks, overhanging trees, submerged wood, and docks all within a small area along shorelines. Not only do these provide cover for bass and other sport fish, but they are also home to a wide variety of bait fish, insects, and crustaceans. Later in the year, when fish seek the cool temperatures of deeper water, they still return to shorelines to feed, making them especially good locations to target actively feeding fish. And best of all, you don't always need a boat. Need enough lobster. Oh yeah, were you were you a lobster fisherman? Yeah, I did the um, I did the offshore thing uh, for pretty much a season. I almost lost my thumb. I got a staph infection. Oh yeah, and uh, a staph infection. Yeah, it's um, fish poisoning. They call it. Fish with it like that for two weeks. Thought I had enough antibiotics. I was only taking half of the dose I should have been taking. My thumb swelled up like a big old black banana. You thought there might be a chance they cut it off? It was actually within about 48 hours of having to take it off. And we were watching the whole time out there for um, for red line, which is um, gangrene. I mean, it was like a great job. <laughs> Just a little guy. Just a little one. He hit while that tube was just drifting in the current. And she barely felt him hit. It was not a hard hit. That's one of the things too is you just feather your trolling motor when you're drifting in the current like this. And what you want to do is just sort of bounce that jig along the bottom, along the rocks and stuff. But be prepared, you are going to lose a lot of terminal tackle. Shorelines with a lot of flooded trees provide ample cover for fish. Crankbaits are a good lure choice for fish in these banks because they cover water quickly and catch active fish. Crank until you hit wood and then let the bait float up over the log before cranking again. Often you will get the strike during that pause. Whoa, baby! <laughs> Mr. Pike yeah. on a king shad, which is a swim bait designed for bass. Hey folks, glad you could join me. I'm here with Matt Maurice, head chef of the Martini House. It's a great eatery in Burlington, just uh, not far from our office. and. Uh, we're up here on a Goki Reservoir, way up north of Superior. We're talking about, we flew into Thunder Bay, drove three hours to Armstrong, flew out in the big otter. What'd you think of that float that plane ride? Absolutely amazing. This is a trip of a lifetime that I've always wanted, and uh, now we're here catching amazing fish. Well, here's the deal is you have to you have to really choose who you bring on these trips because <laughs> it's a housekeeping situation. They got beautiful cabins there and you know, 
you cook your own meals up here. And of course, uh, Matt being a great chef, I figured, okay, he's one of the guys that's coming on this trip. <laughs> We've been eating phenomenal. This yeah. is our last morning here, we were here for uh, just two and a half days or less than two and a half days of fishing. And we thought we'd just come and cast for pike real time, about maybe half an hour, 20 minutes this morning. Then we're going to go catch a few walleyes at another river mouth in a few minutes. But uh, Matt, pretty cool place, isn't it? Amazing. So nice. Lost him? Just missed it. It just missed it or you missed it? I did not set the hook in it properly. Okay. Come on, Matt. We got to get you out fishing more. <laughs> We're just trying to put them on a fish before the float plane comes together. <laughs> oh, we'd had no problems doing that all day. I think the last time I saw him sweat like this, other than in the kitchen, <laughs> was at the... Oh, he's got one! <laughs> was really? at the spring fishing show. Oh, don't lift it in. That's too light a line. Here, I'll grab him for you was at the spring fishing show when we oh, had yeah. the cook off. You remember that? Yeah, of course. There's a little line out there. <laughs> there you go. Got to use that rod instead of the line. Here we go. Okay. Now this crankbait you're using, that could very well be the first pike ever caught on this crankbait. It's brand new and it's pretty cool. It's balsa wood. It's a deep diving crankbait. And chartreuse is a great color, of course. And this is a design for bass, but a great crankbait for pike. It's got the lip. This is circuit board that they use for the uh, the computers. And uh, dives down pretty good depth. And, uh, well, throw it up there, see if you can get another one. You're no pressure at all, Bob. <laughs> Stay tuned for more shoreline fishing at Ogoki Reservoir. And then it's off to Lake Champlain. All right. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. It's pretty much common knowledge that every lake and river has at least one glory hole attached to it, places where game fish are found consistently and in numbers. Understandably, most are well documented and heavily fished. Some reach the status of local legend. Because fish are predictable in behavior, they're relatively easy to find. Smallmouth bass, on the other hand, can fool you. Due to the stereotyped image of smallmouth and rocks, most anglers head there. The same is true of shoreline features like fallen trees. In both cases, be prepared to deal with pressured fish. Virtually bypassed by anglers, some of the very best smallmouth structure is weed beds. Cabbage, coontail, and pencil reed, indeed any type will draw and hold fish. The outer edge is a good starting point, but it's mostly one here and one there. To find concentrations of fish, you have to expand your search and dig deeper. In large weed beds, look for open pockets. Then spot cast to these from a distance. A jig in soft plastic is ideal for the purpose, but remember to make repeated presentations to effect a proper survey. Plastic worms and suspending crankbaits will also do the job. Not all weed pockets will hold fish, but when you find the right one, you'll have a smallmouth bonanza all to yourself. Now, Matt, we yeah. we met when you were a kid, I understand. Yeah, yeah, we met uh, 1982, no. OB Pro Bass Tournament. You and Wayne had uh, fish on. <laughs> you <laughs> and Wayne had... that at? Oh, uh, that would have been Georgian Bay. Uh, Bring them around this side if you can. In the Midland, uh, in the Midland area. I believe it was, actually it was the uh, Penetanguishene Town Docks. I met you and Wayne, and you guys signed uh, signed me a little card that I went, I got your autographs on like a hockey card style with uh, with you guys, 82. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. It was probably seven. That is funny. Well, another one on that crankbait. Yeah. Stuff. This thing's doing Hope good. Hope fix that hook. 1982. Yeah. Did you know you'd be a chef back then? No, I wanted to be you. 
Shorelines are especially good areas to try early in the season because fish are often in shallower water. Lake Champlain has a pre-spawn bass season that provides a great opportunity to catch some of those big bass along shorelines. Again, crankbaits are a good lure choice, but a smaller size is better early in the season because it matches the size of the bait fish. Got yeah, him? yeah, he hit it three times. No before way. I, yeah, the rod's before. loaded up pretty good. Oh yeah, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> he hit it three, three times. Three times, whack, and then a pause, and then a whack, and a pause, and then finally on the third time I hooked him. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I felt him thump it the first time, so I, I paused the retrieve. There's. There's Oh, yeah. I think got mine's bigger. <laughs> yeah, he was persistent. He came back for it. That's a nice fish. There we go. Oh, nice fish. Smallmouth. Yeah, smallmouth, finally. I knew we'd get a smallmouth eventually. Finally a smallmouth. Oh, That's man. a nice smallie, too. Yeah. Finally, a small moth. First one of the trip. <laughs> That's the great thing about fishing Champlain this time of year. You can never know what you're going to come up with. It could either be a small moth or a large mouth. Right in the same spot. There we are. It's a nice little smallie. All right. That's what a lot of people associate Lake Champlain with is the wonderful smallmouth fishing, but, you know, the, the largemouth fishing, so it's almost equal in terms of being phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, uh, northern Champlain certainly is known more for the smallmouth fishing and the southern part of the lake for the largemouth fishing, but this time of year down here in the southern end, like I said, you can, you can cast your lure around these rocky points in the spring and never know whether you're going to come up with a smallie or a largemouth. We've got more Lake Champlain shoreline fishing coming up after the break. Double header on Smalley. Smalley's. This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. Oh, I have to admit, I'm a sun worshiper. I love the sun beating down on me and spending time in the outdoors. And I do spend a few days every year outside. The fact is that nowadays I put on a generous amount of sunscreen, whether it's sunny like today or even on overcast or windy days. You can get burnt, even wind burn, on some of those days that you think the sun's not even hitting you. But now let's talk about a different type of sunscreen. Let's talk about clothing. For a number of years now, the folks at Columbia Sportswear have come out with clothing, in fact, over 220 different styles of clothing that'll protect you from the sun. We're talking about those harmful UV rays that can hit you. Columbia is the first global apparel producer to earn the seal of recommendation. One of the cool things that they have ratings on their tags that'll say, say, 15 UPF all the way up to 50 UPF. UPF is broad spectrum protection from both UVB and UVA rays. Some of the features that they have are mesh, venting, and lightweight fabrics that'll keep you cool while you're fishing. The folks from Columbia have so many different styles of performance fishing gear, and I'll tell you what, with the Omni Shade, it's what I need to keep me protected in the outdoors. It's perfect. Oh, there we go. What do you got? On the pause. Something decent. Not oh, I got bad. one too. Oh, it's our first double header. Uh -huh. What do we got? I think I got a small mouth. I got a small mouth. Isn't that funny? Double header on smallies. Smallies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine's uh, buried in the trebles here. Isn't that funny? All this time catching tons of largemouth, and then all of a sudden, a pair of smallmouth. Mine's bigger. Ah, you know what? <laughs> the camera never lies. But it does add 10 pounds. That's why I tell everybody, I'm not as fat as you think. <laughs> Darn camera just puts the weight on. <laughs> Plus, it's the 35 layers of clothing I got on. Right. 
Right. There's a fish. Oh, yeah. What is that? Oh, largemouth. Large Next cast, a largemouth. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> All right. Isn't that your Let me just pop that hook. Isn't that something? Back to back cast, largemouth, smallmouth on this little rock point here. Wind's blowing in. Obviously, these fish are just bunched up on the point. Yeah, the fish are coming in on the points now. And I mean, that's the phenomenal thing about springtime fishing Whoa. on southern Champlain here. I'm not so sure I like the barb on that one after that one. <laughs> I never touch it. I, I'm trying to cut the odds in my favor here, Bob. I'm turning the, I'm turning <laughs> the boat around. He's bending the barb down on my hook. Hey, you got to play the game. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, can I go three casts? <laughs> no, I can't. Can't get a fish on the third cast, but let's throw one right in there. See what happens. No. No. Is there more on this point? That's pretty good. Three fish. Well, springtime bass fishing on Champlain and Vermont here is just it's phenomenal. The bass that you catch, you never know what you're going to get. One cast is a smallmouth, the next one's a largemouth on the same point. And what I love about it is you can do it when season's closed back in Ontario where I'm from. So this is 100% legal, catch or release fishing. There's another one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think this is a bit bigger fish. Is that a good fish? Yeah, good a, yeah it's got to be. Maybe it's a piker. I don't know. What do we got here? This has got to be. It's a smallie. It's got to be a better fish. Uh, oh, he's taking you. Yeah, man, oh man. They sh Whoa. Whoa. It's probably a small one with big shoulders. <laughs> oh, oh, little just... pike. Oh, what are you doing putting that away? I'm, I'm not going to help you on that. <laughs> okay, I can get him. I actually, I can get him. Oh, you wanted the net? No, I don't need to. Right. I thought I had a big small most, didn't you? Yeah, I I thought so. All right. A mixed bag. Now, that was about six casts for a small most, a couple small most, large most, and a pike. All in the same spot. I bet you didn't cast uh, more than... 10 or 15 feet apart on those casts and you got three different species of fish. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That is awesome. Come on, throw a cast in there. Don't be shy. I'm just in awe of the master here at work. <laughs> yeah. Although my smallmouth is bigger. There's no doubt that shorelines are a great area to catch a lot of fish. So next time you're out on the water, try beating the bank. Hey, we'll see you next week right here for some more real fishing. Yeah, alright! <laughs> <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. Whoa! <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah! Wow. <laughs> oh, man. That was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that. <laughs> yes!